Hello and welcome, JB Gaming here. In this video, we'll be going over the YOLOL programming language in Starbase. I'm assuming that you've watched the YOLOL introduction video put out by the developers, but if not, I'll be providing a high-level summary. Also, be aware that this video is being put out before the release of Early Access, and so I'm not able to go in-game in order to test out these scripts. Lastly, this video is not meant to be an introduction into programming, just how YOLOL works within Starbase. So let's jump into the basics. This game has created its own programming language that you'll be able to use to control your ships and factories. This programming will be done on in-game items called YOLOL chips. There will be different tiers of chips and the operators that you'll have available will be dependent on which tier of chip that you are using. The developer's YOLOL feature video shows that there will be three different tiers of chips available. The lowest tier will be restricted to just basic arithmetic and assignment. The second tier will add some comfort features such as the power function, the square root function, or factorials. Lastly, the third tier will add trig functions and inverse trig functions. Keep in mind that this information is coming before the game has entered early access and is subject to change. In order to function, these chips will be placed into sockets or modular device racks. The sockets or the modular device racks will need to be connected to power and device networks through the use of the cable tool. Device networks are just components with device fields that are connected through the cable tool. The device fields are the variables for each component that will be controlled through YOLOL. Finally, if you need to control variables other than device fields between multiple YOLOL chips, Starbase has memory chips in-game that can store up to 10 different variables. Now I'm going to go over the limitations that the YOLOL programming language has. Each YOLOL chip only has 20 lines for you to put your code, and each line only has a capability for 70 characters. This means for those that are trying to write optimized code, you will end up with short variable names that are hard to distinguish. Also, this means that complexity of your code will become a design consideration for your ship, because in order to include more and more YOLOL chips, it will take up more and more physical space within your ship. Next, each line of a YOLOL chip takes a fifth of a second to run, which means if you were to run all 20 lines of a YOLOL chip, it would take four seconds to run the whole chip, which I will now demonstrate. Though this would help with server stability, you can see this makes YOLOL much slower than any modern programming language. It should be noted that if you need more processing power, you could try to run multiple YOLOL chips in parallel. Before I wrap up this video, I'm going to go through a simple button, door, information display tutorial. This should help tie together all of the basics of the YOLOL programming language. The end result of the network will be a button that opens the door and an information display that shows whether or not the door is open or closed. The first step will be to collect information on the device fields for each of these components. For this guide, I'm only going to go over the device fields that we'll need for this tutorial, starting with the button. For more information, check out the wiki. The first field, button state, is the output of the button. This is the field that gets modified when you interact with the button. Now I'm going to go over the device fields for the door. The first field, door open state, sets where you want the door to be. If the door isn't already in this state, it'll try to reach it at the velocity defined below. The next field, door current state, shows whether or not the door is already opened or already closed, with 0 being the closed state and 1 being the open state. And now we'll go over the device field for the information display. This one is a simple one. The device field info screen content will be a string that will be displayed on the panel itself. Now that we've got all of our components, we would need to connect them up using the cable tool. Now, the first step in implementing the project will be to get the button to open and close the door. This actually won't require any YOLOL programming. All we'll need to do is rename the device field button state to door open state. This will work because the device field on the button will still be the one to change when you press and release the button. And since the device field on the button now has the same name as the device field on the door, when the variable is changed in one location, it'll be changed throughout the data network in all spots that it appears. I'll go into more detail on namespaces in my next video. The next task to do in this example would be to add a YOLOL chip and a socket to the device network. With the chip installed, we can begin programming the information display. We'll start off with an if statement to check on the current state of the door. 
Note the use of a colon before the device field door current state because this is an external variable. Again, I'll go into more detail on namespaces in my next video. The if statement is specifically checking to see if the door is closed. If the door is closed, we will set up a local variable with a string saying simply closed. For this example, we can use an else statement to set the local variable to open for all other cases. Lastly, we will need to close off the if statement with an end. Now we'll use a string concatenation in order to put our local variable on the information screen. Lastly, we will wrap up this YOLO chip with a goTo command so that way it doesn't waste its time with the empty lines. With the YOLO written, our simple button door information screen system should now be operational. Before I wrap up this video, I want to point you to a YOLO community group called Cylon that has already been put together. They've created an online tool to go ahead and let you practice YOLO programming before the game releases. Also, if you have any more questions, the folks on the Cylon Discord and the Starbase Discord are more than happy to help. Links will be in the description below. This is JB Gaming. Thanks for watching, and until next time.